Hi, I'm Harry, the T-Powered Physicist, and welcome to my channel, where today we're going to be deriving and discussing the Virial Theorem, which connects the time average kinetic and potential energies of a closed system. Put simply, Virial Theorem says that if you know how much mass is in the system you're studying, you can work out the forces that bind them alongside the total kinetic and potential energies of that system. This then allows you to work out a load of other information, such as the temperature of that system. Starting with the concept here, we have a collection of point masses Mi, with positions Ri and momentum Pi. These bodies constitute the total system, which has mass m and radius r. Starting with the kinetic energy, we know that one particle has Ke half mi vi squared. The total kinetic energy of the system is therefore just the sum of individual particles' kinetic energies. What we're going to do is expand this velocity term into its separate Cartesian terms. Since v equals the time derivative of position r, then via Pythagoras, the term takes on the following form. We note that this is not in vector format, though it will become later. Likewise, for the potential energy, from formula u equals minus g m m over r, we can say that the total potential energy of the system is all of that summed over the magnitude of the distance between them. But this makes us count each potential energy twice, so we divide this ultimately by 2. Now we concern ourselves with the moment of inertia for a single particle, the equation for which is mi ri squared, which we rewrite as above. We perform the time differential of this equation, followed by the second time differential, which uses chain rule. We then get this pattern that covers the x's, y's, and z's. So rearranging this, we get the following. If we're keen-eyed, we can spot that this component is in fact vi squared. So rewriting it again, and we can spot another familiar term, the kinetic energy. This can take on the following form, and can then be summed over the entire system. By recalling our earlier definition of the vector form R, we can rewrite the moment of inertia equation, where the first term equals 4 times the total system kinetic energy, T, and the second term is 2 times something called the virial, which also equals the summation of Fi, Ri dot products. We now delve into the virial for an individual particle I. Concerning the force experienced by this particle, it is simply the summation of all forces all other particles exert on I. At this point, we conjure a mathematical identity for the local vector position of particle I, Ri, and adjust the virial term. This term actually equals zero for the following reasons. We can rewrite the sum over I, Fi dot magnitude of distance as the sum over i and j is not equal to i forces i on j dot distance. However, because this is due by Newton's third law, equal and opposite to the force experienced by particle j on i, this term can cancel to zero, leaving just the second term. Tailoring the force to be gravitational in nature, we rewrite it in a slightly odd format. Then, this overall term of I summed force dot distance becomes such, which we call V, the total potential energy. Stitching it all together, we get the final equation. Substituting the summation term with what we've just derived, we can say that the second time derivative of momentum is equal to 4 times the total kinetic energy plus 2 times the total potential energy which we can write in equivalent time-averaged format. Over long periods of time in a relaxed system, this tends to zero, and the virial theorem assumes its final form. <laughs> 